how to check for scoliosis in adults. Scoliosis affects all ages. Babies with born with scoliosis are considered to have congenital scoliosis this is the most common type. And this is when there's a malformed bone or a hemivertebra in the spine that actually happens in utero. But outside of congenital scoliosis, we also know there's infantile scoliosis that can typically occur from zero to three years of age. We have juvenile scoliosis, which is also called early onset scoliosis, which can occur between three and 10 years of age. We have adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, which is the most common type, but adolescent scoliosis specifically is between 10 and 18 years of age. And adult scoliosis is once a patient has reached skeletal maturity and is diagnosed in the adult form. Now, scoliosis is a progressive condition, meaning it is nature to worsen over time. So, so a lot of times these patients can have scoliosis at an earlier time in life, but it never was big enough to be diagnosed. So the juvenile case turns into an adolescent case, the adolescent case turns into an adult case. So as these patient goes through with scoliosis, these different phases of life, the diagnosis is typically categorized at the time they're diagnosed. But not always do we know if a patient had adolescent scoliosis now in the adult form, but that's the way it works. In this progressive nature of scoliosis, these unnatural curvatures increase in size. And as they increase in size, they cause more uneven forces to the body to be exposed. And as they're causing more une uneven forces to being exposed, it can cause more and more problems, meaning more postural problems, more pain problems, more other types of symptoms. We know scoliosis has a wide variety in terms of severity, and it's normally categorized into four different types of severities, mild scoliosis, moderate scoliosis, severe, and something that we call very severe. Now in children, the main symptom in children is postural deviation. We'll see uneven shoulders, we'll see uneven hip, are normally the uneven, the most, the most earliest indicators. We can see rib changes, we can see changes to overall body symmetry, we can see their arms hanging unnaturally or unevenly. We used to see any type of postural deviation, pelvis, hips, shoulders, waist, head not centered over the, over the torso, torso not centered over the pelvis. And it, this is the number one symptom that brings out a a diagnosis in children. Normally it's not pain, normally it's not any type of uh, functional issues, it's normally only symmetry, posture symmetry. In addition to posture deviation, there could be some other things like gait and coordination, but it's normally not pain that causes any type of significant problems. In adults, this is exactly the opposite. The number one thing that brings out a diagnosis in an adult patient is normally pain. And because scoliosis in the adult form becomes compressive, before the adult form was occurring, kids were growing and developing. And as they're growing and developing, the elongation of the spine causes progression. And this progression is non-painful because it's not compressing. In the adult form, scoliosis becomes compressive to gravity over time. And it's the compression of the spine and the surrounding tissues and muscles and nerves that can lead to pain-related symptoms associated with scoliosis. Adults do experience postural deviation, and normally they can have leans to the side, they can lean forward, but by far, pain is the most common symptom. Normally, if patients have postural deviations and they have an adolescent curve in the adult stage, they see these posture issues, but they don't have any symptoms, and they just think that's, that's them. But unfortunately, if we see a significant posture asymmetry, there could be a scoliosis inside. So if you're seeing any kind of posture asymmetry and you're having pain, you may want to have an x-ray done of your spine to actually see if there's an underlying scoliosis scoliosis. Back pain, especially lower back pain that radiates into the leg or down into the left leg most commonly. You can also radiate into the arms, arms and hands. This is the most common thing that we tend to see with pain, uh, pain in scoliosis patients. Adult patients are checked very similarly. They do physical examinations, they do patient histories, but the first thing they want to look at if they're looking for scoliosis is posture as well. They look at posture and gait. This tells a doctor a lot in terms of what's going on. And normally the posture evaluation could be not only looking from the front or from the side or from the back, but they may also move the patient into different positions, bending, bending, their, bending their body forward, looking at the rib arches, looking at the lumbar changes, seeing if there's any kind of posture deviation that's occurring while they're bending. If there's a positive posture finding and there's some historical findings that happen in the patient's history, normally the next thing that we do is we'll take scoliosis x-rays. And scoliosis x-rays tell us what's happening inside around the spine. Now, in order for a scoliosis to be officially diagnosed, an x-ray must be taken and we must measure a Cobb angle of 10 degrees or greater 
with rotation needs to be measured on the x-ray that was taken. So if it's less than 10 degrees, it's officially not considered a scoliosis. But if somebody has nine or eight degrees with rotation, I, I still consider it a scoliosis. It just haven't, hasn't progressed to the number yet. But it, the official diagnosis occurs at 10 degrees. Now, there are two main types of scoliosis that affect patients, that affect adults most commonly. The most common type by far is adolescent cases now in the adult form. And the most common form of adolescent case in the adult form is something called idiopathic scoliosis. So idiopathic scoliosis in the adolescent form, either diagnosed or undiagnosed because it never became big enough and they never caused any pain in the adolescence, they moved into the adult form and now the curves start to progress in the adult form. And as they progress, they compress down on tissues and normally somewhere in, you know, in, in middle to later stage life, they start having pain and discomfort. They go have an x-ray and they said, oh, you have scoliosis. And the person never knew they had it. So sometimes they can, the initial diagnosis of an adolescent curve could be in the adult because they actually never got evaluated or x-rayed or checked as an adolescent because they were having no dysfunction or their posture was never noted to actually send out for an x-ray. This by far is the most common form of adult scoliosis is the adolescent scoliosis that was not diagnosed that is now progressing in the adult form now causing pain and problems now in this stage we still want to manage these curves very very similarly like we do in adolescent cases meaning we want to manage the curve size because the curve size is what's normally causing the problem it's the progression in the adult stage now the good thing about this type of person is that we normally don't have to reduce their curve to zero to make these patients actually improve and what they're experiencing in the adult form it is this we have to reduce your curve closer to the where they were where they stopped growing now since in the adult stage curves progress slowly not rapidly somebody can go 10 or 15 years with only minimal progression so normally we don't have to get a significant amount of reduction we still get we still get some and they can see some improvement that will in terms of what the patient is feeling the second most common type that is something called degenerative scoliosis now degenerative scoliosis is happening because something happens to the spine that causes a, a shift to occur in the adult form. This small little shift goes uncorrected, but it causes this very localized asymmetry, typically in the lumbar spine. This uh, localized asymmetry starts to deteriorate or degenerate abnormally or faster than the rest of the spine. Think of an unaligned car. If a car is not aligned properly, one car is only, one tire is going to degenerate faster than the other three. This accelerated degeneration. Now, sometimes it's used natural age-relating degeneration. Well, I would dis I would argue that because if that was the case, the entire spine would be degenerating at exactly at the same rate. But we see in degenerative scoliosis that the area of the scoliosis is degenerated much more extensively than the rest of the, the spine. So it's it's accelerated age-related degeneration in this area. And as the spine deteriorates and degenerates, the bones change shape and they cause spinal degeneration, which lead to a degenerative type of scoliosis. This can be normally associated with pain and it's normally occurring and normally the number one symptom is stiffness and pain. Patients are very stiff because the, 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 the spine becomes very rigid in this area. More common in females, normal, most common, more common to be diagnosed at 50 plus years of age. Even though we think the initial shift occurred much younger in life, normally related to some type of trauma or injury. Now, even though scoliosis is most commonly diagnosed in children, it doesn't mean it's the greatest population of patients with scoliosis. We actually believe the greatest population of patients with scoliosis is associated with age. The higher the age group, the greater the percentage of population because you have all the adolescent cases now in the adult form. You have all the undiagnosed adolescent cases now being diagnosed in the adult form. And then you also have all the adult onset degenerative scoliosis cases now in the adult form. So we know as we see older age groups, we see a greater percentage of scoliosis patients. And with this greater percentage of scoliosis patients being in the adult cases, unfortunately, they're experiencing more and more pain and discomfort because the curve is actually progressing in this stage. So in this progressive nature in the adult form, the number one diagnostic feature or the one that brings out the diagnosis is pain. But if you know you have scoliosis and say you're a young adult, you're not experiencing pain yet, I would still recommend you get it evaluated and check on it because it's the progression in the adult 
that was causing pain. So for most adult patients, we do want to reduce them back to where they were before they started feeling pain. If you treat your curve and never let your curve become painful, it's way better being proactive to prevent a curve from be to become painful than trying to reduce a curve. Now, the sooner we reduce an adult curve, the sooner the pain starts, the sooner that you re receive treatment when the pain starts, the more likely we are to do this. However, some patients wait years and years and years and years, sometimes decades, and there's a significant gap between when they actually seek treatment and when their pain started, and sometimes it can be more difficult to get that outcome. But the outcome will be is to reduce the magnitude of the scoliosis to influence how the curve is progressing and to start influencing how the body's reacting to the scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.